Oops. Just getting ready here. Be there in one moment. I guess I should have I meant to change my thumbnail. Oh well. <laughs> All righty. Making sure my audio is okay. Can you guys hear me okay today? Making sure my audio is okay. All right. How are you all today on Sunday, August 2nd? This is our weekly Sewing Bee live chat. And I've got a lot of fun things to talk about today. Um, first of all, as soon as more people get on, I'm gonna go ahead and announce the giveaway winner. I did, what I did was number the comments and then chose a random number with a random number generator to make it all really fair and I know who it is and I'm the only one who knows. <laughs> anyway, I hope she's here today. And um, I've got a couple other things. I've got uh, something I need your opinion on. Um, just some, got some fabric and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. And um, yeah, I just wanna see what you guys are up to. I wanna hear what patterns you bought in the Love Notion sale too. Um, kind of excited myself to Get to some there's only a few really that I haven't sewn before but there's uh, there's a few and I really kind of want to get to those so all right let's see who's here hi Rachel hi Darlene Joey good to see all of you guys Joey we are gonna do that uh, projector one of these days I'm gonna see if I can't figure out how to get you on a live um, if I can get like a double screen or something that you can show it to us if you if you're willing to do that otherwise um, you know you can just like I don't know we'll figure something out but I would love to hear more about your projector that's something that I have toyed with um, I don't know if it would work in this room that's my hold up but it sure would save a lot of paper <laughs> uh, let's see hi Kim Eva Hi, Kristen. Fourteen Dory. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to see you, Julia. Madeline, Deborah. Hi, nice to see you. Oh, you lucky in Lancaster by all the good fabric stores. <laughs> Do you get to them as much as you, as I you think you would would I know I would want to go all the time. Um, if I lived near Fabric Mart and some of the other ones. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. Hi, Rhonda. Oh, it's got lots of familiar names in here today. Yay. Well, I'm definitely going to wait until after 3 to announce the winner because I want to give everybody an opportunity to get on. So, did, did you buy patterns in the Love Notion sale? What did you get? Um, I Like I said, I, um, I only have a few that I haven't made yet. Um, I want to make the, I got the boys Vanguard and I want to make that um, for my, uh, I have two grandsons, a five year old and a six year old. So that's a perfect age for that pattern. And I think it'd be really great for fall. So I was looking at that. Um, other ones I haven't made, um, I, there's not too many. <laughs> Namaste, I have not made that night, that, uh, pajamas for myself out of that pattern yet so I have the pattern I just haven't done it so I want to do that there most of them if, if I haven't sewn them I already own them so um, you know I own way more patterns than I've ever sewn hi Cheryl first time on thank you for joining us welcome oh Linda you got the lyric it's so beautiful I bet Car Karina uh, talked you into that with her um uh, little hack she did on that she was so excited about that and it looks so nice and um yeah i i think i might even do do the buttonless lyric sometime and and uh do it with knit it looks so comfy 
<laughs> you do have to restrain because you overspend. Yeah, I do too. Um, fortunately, I don't have, I, you know, I get a pretty good break with Love Notion since I'm an ambassador, but um, with other pattern companies, it's really easy for it to mount up. Um, I find myself buying an awful lot of Ellie and Mac, and um, five out of four lately I've been buying. Um, I just got the, I had the shenanigans skirt for uh, adults, but I didn't have it for girls, and it's, that is five dollars this weekend. So just a heads up, um, if you go to um, my, the bottom of my, any of my descriptions, I actually have an affiliate link to 5 out of 4, and that um, is on sale this weekend for $5. They've been having some $5 sales uh, on Friday through Sunday as well, so that's pretty good. You bought the Willow dress. Oh, cool. And Rhonda got the cadence and the cartwheel. You are going to love that cartwheel. Oh, it's so cool. I bought, I made another outfit, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Um, bought the Willow and the Girl Sunday Romper. Nice. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, the PJs. Oh, in a piping course this month. Oh, that's so cool. You're just, uh, piping is fun and it adds such a nice touch. Um, I use piping on my Carolyn pajamas. Um, they were Christmas pajamas, and it was green, and so I used red piping, and they look so Christmassy that way. Um, although they're they're woven, and I'm going to be honest, I don't wear those Carolyn pajamas as much as I thought I would because I like to wear knits. They just give when you're sleeping, you know. Um, I, sorry, but <laughs> I don't wear them as much as I thought I would. Oh, Sandra, you bought so many. I know. we. It's very hard to say no to them. Hi, Aunt B. Beck, I'm sorry. I, the first week I thought it said B, and um, I'm, my apologies, Becky. Hi, Becky. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, hi, Madeline. Ruth, hi. Nice to see you. Julia, you bought a purse pattern, a PJ pattern, and a leggings pattern. That's awesome. You got the, Madeline got the Cadence, Laundry Day Tea, the Harmony, and the Vivace. Wow, you got some all stars there. They're wonderful patterns. Hey Nancy, nice. I'm glad you finally could catch us. Uh, let's see, which love notions would work well in scuba? Hmm, let me think on that. Almost any of the woven ones probably would is if you maybe size down a little bit or go, you know, a little more on the lower edge because scuba is pretty stable. Um, I think that the Sabrina's would be lovely in scuba. Um, I, duets would be, because duets can be either woven or knit. Um, let me think on that. Oh, definitely, um, you could do an acorn vest. Um, those are the, the kind of, um, sporty vests. I don't know what kind of, is it floral or, or what, but the Whistler would be, I think, nice and scuba for warm weather, though. Um, I think a, a cardigan could be nice and scuba if you wanted a more structured kind of look to it. Um, not, I like scuba. It's a nice fabric. You have the Sunday romper dress cut out. Yeah, I want to make a dress too. I've only I've made like three rompers so far, but I haven't made a dress out of that one yet. So I should do that. Uh, it's a just a nice knock around. Um, you can wear it all all the time, all day. You know, dress it up, whatever. That not that we can go anywhere right now, right? <laughs> Um, I'm sewing so much for the grandkids right now because honestly, you know, you, when we're not going anywhere, we're not going anywhere. So <laughs> I still, you know, I still dress up every day. I get dressed and put makeup on so I can do videos and stuff and feel good about myself. Because if I don't, you know, if I just sit, stay in sweats all the time, you know, that's not good for you. So I make myself get up and get dressed, except for when I didn't feel good for a little bit there. I, you get called Aunt B all the time. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. I just didn't see that it was a C there the first time I met you. Hi, Ruth. Um, I am getting, well, I get a lot of patterns from Love Notions. On their site, it's lovenotions.com. And I also, um, I like 
a lot of the online um, PDF companies. I don't sew very much commercial anymore. I used to um, do all the big four, but now I tend to like the independent um, designers more just because they tend to fit better and they tend to be more true to size. Plus you get all the sizes usually with the exception of Style Arc, which they do not give you all the sizes, but most of them give you all the sizes. So it's, you know, one price and then you could print it out as many times as you want. So you don't have to rebuy it. Like if you're making it for, like I have a men's shirt pattern that I have three copies of for my husband, my son, and my son-in-law, you know, um, shouldn't have to be that way. Uh, let's see. Um, hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Hi, Brenda. In Kentucky, just a little bit down the road from me. I'm in Toledo, Ohio, actually, so just up the road. Um, Deb, nice to see you. You're in England. It's evening for you already over there, isn't it? Um, hi, Teresa. Good to see you. What patterns would be your choices made in linen? Oh, Nancy, there's so many. I think the Lyric dress would be really nice in linen. I think that, see, did you see the new seamwork patterns? Um, they came out with two new ones. They have two new ones every month. And um, I love being a seamwork member. They're also my favorite, another one of my favorite companies. And um, they have an overalls pattern that um, has like a bib and it, you can also do like a skirt hack with it. That looks interesting. I think that would be good in linen. Um, shorts are nice in linen. Um, but my favorite one, I think, would be the peppermint um, ruffle sleeve top in linen. That looks really nice. I have not made it in linen yet, but I've seen it on so many other people in linen that I want to make a linen version of that. Okay. Vicki, nice to, yeah, nice to have you here for the first time. Good, we got a nice crowd today. Yeah. I'm gonna grab something really quick because I wanna show you. I meant to grab this before I sat down today. But I made another cartwheel. Um, remember I told you I was gonna do the, the top and skirt as well for my little granddaughter. So here's the top in this stripey thing with the floral on the back insert. And then here's the little skirt. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. And I didn't hem it because I had a nice clean cut with my rotary cutter and it's double brush poly so it shouldn't have to be hemmed. But I did put the shorts under there. If you can see them. The little shorts underneath. So she'll be nice and modest and she can twirl away. She is three, so this is going to look really cute on her. And I need to do something for her brother because that's two things for her. And he actually noticed when I gave her the dress. Um, well, I, did, I didn't see him because they just got back from Florida and they're quarantined for 14 days. Because in Ohio, if you come back from any of the hot spots with COVID, you have to be quarantined. So... I um, didn't see them, but my husband, my son had to come and pick up their dog. He did have to do that. And so I gave that to him to take to her, or gave it to him to take to home to her. To her. And um, he, now he thinks that, why didn't I get something? So I can't give this to her without making something for him. <laughs> so um, that's what I want your help with today. So we'll I'll get that out here in a little bit. Oh, thank you. It is, I, I just, I think these are just the cutest little, I love this pattern. This little peekaboo back here is so cute. And I knew that the full circle skirt was going to be like full, but it's just so, oh, so girly. And I don't know, I don't think I need to hem that. I, it calls for either a rolled edge, you know, and I could do my curved hem, but I just feel like it would add bulk. And it's, you know, very clean cut, so I don't think I need to. I think I'm going to leave it. I love stripes and flowers, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> I have a Allie and Mac poppy top out of this same two fabrics. that, And this was actually my leftovers that I made it out of. All right. Hard to find things for boys. It, it is. Um, not near as many things for boys as they are girls. Um, Ramona, nice to meet you. You're in 
central Wyoming where the weather is a sunny, beautiful day. Well, you could send it this way because it's dreary, ugly, and rainy here today. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Uh, you got your swatch books from Vogue this week. Oh, good. Uh, did you get back issues, Brenda? Um, I ordered a back issue from Vogue. I thought I would, you know, get an old one because you can't subscribe right now. Um, but uh, I haven't, I haven't received it yet, and they're free. The back issues are free. Um, hi, Lisa. Good to see you. Glad you're on today. Um, hi, Cheryl. Okay. Hi, Edna. Nice to see you. Good to see you all. Um, so. So I wanted your opinion on whether or not I should hem that. And also, um, I've got two fabrics to make something for my grandson. And I'll tell you what patterns I'm thinking of. And you tell me what you think I should do. Um, let's see. And Oh, you got a new winter 2020? I didn't think that you could get it. I wonder, they haven't shipped mine. I wonder if I could add it to the order. I might call them tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. What's your first name? Stitch, stamp, sew, and repeat. I like that. Um, oh, Ginny. I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're joining us today. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm glad you can make it today. Um, hi, Melanie. I know the last couple weeks, Kathy, that I have been, you know, not, not at the right time because of life. Life goes you know, life happens. <laughs> um, but hi, Linda. Thank you so much. I agree. I don't really think it needs a hem. I don't, I think it would just put weight on it and make it less poofy or, you know, light and full. Hi, Vicki, you're in Michigan. You were in Toledo yesterday. Wow. <laughs> cool. I'm in Perrysburg. So if you're drive around Toledo, you know where that is. I'm in Perrysburg. And my daughter actually lives in Temperance, Michigan. So um, just over, that's still part of the Toledo area. For those who aren't familiar with this area of Ohio, it's extreme Northwest Ohio. So it's literally, Detroit airport is 45 minutes from my house. So super close to Michigan. And um, we are sitting right where I-75 crosses the Ohio Turnpike. And that is where it's literally less than a mile from my house, that exchange. I have made the transformer jacket, Carol. Um, I sure have. I made it for my um, five-year-old grandson for his birthday. And um, I showed it in my um, gift ideas for kids video. I made it out of black and white buffalo plaid. Actually, that little dress I showed in the cartwheel collection video was the leftover fabric from the jacket that I made him. Um, skip the hem. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought everybody else would uh, feel the same way. Uh, you Okay, Edna purchased the Rhapsody and Duet trouser patterns from Love Notions and using the Duet. And Oh, oh thank you. Good to... Good to know. I need some pictures of pants. I'm trying to work on this final video for the pants because I wanted to do like a little slideshow of everybody's pants and there's only like one person in there. So um, on the Facebook group, I created an album and all you have to do is go to that album and you can add pictures to it and you can just put your finished pant pictures in there. If you want to put your muslin ones in there, you can too. Because um, if I have enough muslin ones, I will do a little demonstration of that as well. But I just wanted to do a cute little slideshow of all of our pants. Just showing, like, you know, the finished product. So if you could get a chance to put your finished pants in there, that would be great. Or maybe if you're like me, you know, a lot of times I'll sign up for something. But I don't actually finish it until after the whole thing is over. Um, like Berta classes. I've signed up for Berta classes and then... Um, you know, I didn't really follow along because of life, you know, I mean, life just happens. And then I did finish it, but I didn't finish it when the rest of the class finished it. So, um, well, if you do get your pants fit, finished, Kathy, put them in there. <laughs> You're just starting back in clothing, have done a lot of quilting. I have not done a lot of quilting. I've made like 
four or five quilts in my life. I love them, but um, I I guess I like the usefulness of the garments. That's what draws me to that, I think. But uh, the quilts were a lot of fun. I did a classic rock quilt for my husband that's just really fun. I took scanned album covers and printed them on um, fabric and, you know, uh, it's really cool. It, there's all because we got to talking about what our top 100 uh, classic rock albums of all time on a real long car trip, and I he didn't know that I was keeping a list, and then I made him a quilt. It's pretty fun. All right, hi Javace, nice to see you. Glad you're here. Hi Paula, good to see you. Hi Peggy. We are having a blessed Sunday. I am, for sure. Is it after three yet? It is, okay. Would you like me to announce the winner now or should we wait for a few more people? Um, Superb, I guess that's your name. Um, we pretty much chat and answer questions, uh, Q&A. Um, I don't really have a project today, but I am open to suggestions on that because I'm not opposed to doing a project at this chat. But if I do that, I need my eyes to be able to read your questions. So, you know, I wasn't sure if you all want me to do a project and just have you guys watch along. I wouldn't be as able to follow along your questions and comments, though, as if I can just give it my full attention and we I can answer questions about the you know past few weeks or whatever, whatever videos or whatever you have on your mind. So that's the you know the theory behind this chat, but if you would like me to do a project from here on, I can. So if you all feel that way, please let me know. All right, yeah, it was really cool. That's one of my favorite things I've ever made was that classic rock quilt. Oh, what kind of melody top did you make? What kind of fabric, Lisa? Sounds beautiful. You went to storage gut surgery because, oh, reverse level disintegrated. Oh, no. Oh, you won't. It's really easy. The only thing is just make sure you keep things away from the blade, you know, because I think everybody... When they first start with a serger, I think a lot of people have done this. I know I did. You know, I got something caught up underneath and cut a part of my project. It was just disheartening. So just make sure that everything is clear of the blade except for what you wanted to cut. Um, and then you'll be fine. Because it rips out just like regular, you know, it rips out, I think, even easier than regular stitches. So, um just, you know, don't be afraid of it. Just keep make sure you keep the stuff away from the blade. <laughs> That's the voice of experience. <laughs> I've done it. Hi, Anna. Nice to see you. Hi, Kay. Oh, thank you for saying that, Kay. I really appreciate that. Hi, Ramona. Oh, thank you. I, I you know, I... I know that we're all struggling with this whole pandemic time and not being able to spend as much time with our close friends and stuff like that. So that was the idea behind starting this chat when I started it. Um, but it can morph into anything we want it to be. And I'm totally open to, you know, if it's sometime you want it to be something a little bit more, um, a project or whatever, I'm totally open to that. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt your dinner. I hope you were able to finish and um, no problem. This is a pop in and out at will thing. <laughs> okay, I, that's a, a good thought. So Libra, that she says she'd like both chats and sometimes a project. Okay. I thought maybe I might try to like at least have a theme or something to sort of talk about. Um, in case people aren't chatty, because that happens occasionally. Usually about after the hour is up, almost up, people kind of start running out of questions and things, and um, it's kind of real obvious when it's, you know, time to wrap up. <laughs> 
floral uh, Hobby Lobby floral cotton jeans friendly. Oh, nice. That'll be so nice. I um I I don't know if you've seen my Beatles one that I made with Melody Dolman. It's this really cool Beatles fabric on one side and just navy blue on the other. I didn't have only had a half a yard, so I just had to creatively find what piece I wanted to put it on. <laughs> it was very precious fabric from Spoonflower. It was very expensive. So I was going to make a pillow, but I just loved it so much I wanted to wear it. So I just made half of the front <laughs> of the Melody Dolman with it. Oh, thank you, Solibra. This is the Belladonna, and I haven't really lost weight. I've kind of just been staying. I lost the at first when the pandemic started, and then I kind of put a few back, and then I've lost it again. So, um, no, it's not rude. <laughs> I yeah, the Terra tunic is nice. That's another one of those that I haven't made. It's kind of one of those obscure ones that people don't talk about very much, but that looks really nice too. Very uh, slim lined. I think it would be very uh, flattering. Um, I wore, for our church service, I wore a Cali shirt that I made, a tunic. And, oh, what a bad choice. And I look at, and I thought it would be okay because I put it over Sabrina Slim's slim pants. And so usually a tunic over slim pants looks pretty good. But I look huge in that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not wearing that together again. It's awful. So I don't like that Cali shirt. I'm not, after seeing it on video, I'm not sure I'm going to wear it anymore. <laughs> uh, hi, Penny. Good to see you. You caught the fabric on the, oh, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you do that, something like that, or when you're trimming a seam. I have these, um, I can't reach them, but these applique scissors to kind of help when you're trimming, like, stuff away from the seam allowances. But you know what? Even those aren't foolproof. you got to be so careful, and I've caught my knits doing that um, a couple times. Um, but it's disheartening when that stuff happens, but it just makes you more careful, I guess, the next time. Where to get t-shirt fabric on the heavier side for men. Um, I get uh, the cotton lycra 95.5 and it's pretty hefty stuff um, from Girl Charlie. And um, they have a ton of solid colors. So you could try there. Also Purple Seamstress has a lot. And um, where else was I on? Surge has some. Um, and I got some, the mystery box from Nick of Time which was 10 ounce cotton lycra in all different colors. And I got, certainly I got a really nice assortment of colors, but many of them would, will work for men and boys, which I like because I had, tend to have a lot of, you know, the stuff I'm drawn to, which is flowers and purple and, you know, um, so it, it forced me into um, thinking outside the box to get that mystery box, so. Um, sure, so along for Sabrina Slims, we can do that. Um, yeah, we could do that. Brenda's, oh, you dress for him. She's been on a diet. <laughs> yeah, this one isn't my size anymore either. I, I hear you. I've, I've padded it and padded it, and then I've taken padding out, and I just use quilt batting underneath that cover. Um, but she's pretty lumpy right now. I need to fix it. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's not hard to make the Transformer jacket. Um, it's very involved. They have a good sew along on their uh, YouTube channel. That little uh, Diana who does those, she does such a good job. And, and I wish I had her set up where she's just able to turn and have her serger here and her cover stitch here and her machine here and iron. It's just great. But um, she goes really, you know, she goes through it and explains it. And, you know, it's not hard at all. Um, once you s see how it is, it's, you realize it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty much a sort of a pocket on the inside. And then you just flip it. And it's not, it's not hard. Um, the first one you do, though, it'll take you a little bit. 
Um, but I made it in, you know, like one day and part of another, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Kay, your dress forms in time out in the closet. That's funny. <laughs> that is great. I have not made a duct tape double. Anybody else done that? Yeah. Hi, Katie. Nice to see you. When sewing with knits, how do you get your machine to stop eating the fabric when you start stitching? I'll show you. This is a hump jumper. And if you put that right under your... I don't, I don't have it on right now. But if you put that right under your presser foot, um, to kind of hold down your fabric and then as it starts to go it just helps it grab and it just goes no problem it, but it really helps I got this at Wawac it, it came in two this is the thinner one then there's a little bit thicker one um, the thin one's great for knits and it was really cheap and I think they, they have a version of this not the actual hump jumper but on Amazon as well and they're just wonderful. I use them for a lot of things. I'll use it turned around this way when I need to go over a hump. Um, I have the thicker one does really well with jeans, um, the seams of jeans. So yeah, really nice. Um, that is what I use to get started on those thin knits. I also, I have this AccuFeed on this new Janome. And that helps a lot too because it feeds from the top and the bottom. So... Why are we all nervous about trying things? That's a good question. Um, I think that's just our human nature. Um, but you know, when we do, usually successful in some way. <laughs> so I see an oh no, and I have to go back and find out what the oh no is from. Oh, she gave up because of the tape. I think those take a lot of tape. I'd be afraid that I'd tape myself and wouldn't be able to get out. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see yours, Victoria. Can you post it on our Facebook group? Because I, I haven't actually seen anybody with one that's working well, so that would be great. Oh, yeah, I have um, I, one that came with my machine that they intend for you to use with, for buttons, I think. But it does work. It's a little bit thicker than this, but it, it'll do the job. Yeah, money is a definitely a, a hard non-starter thing for some things. I know. It's, I try to save money wherever I can. Um, whenever, like, there's a product that I really like but it costs a lot I try to figure out how can I make it or you know at home so that I'm not spending money like so keezy tapes you know I buy now I just buy knit interfacing and I cut one inch strips and roll them up on an old spool and it's the same thing <laughs> um, oh we'll just hold your hand through it Kathy Ann, just don't be afraid. Knits are not hard. You know, it's just it's just knowing when to stretch and when not to stretch and what layer to stretch and what parts, you know, you have to think about what part of the body it's going around. If it's some place that has a sharper curb, you stretch a little bit more. That's really all there is to it. It's very, very, like, intuitive once you start doing it, and um, it's not hard at all. You know, to get the, the neck bands to lay flat, you just, you know, you just quarter it. It's even all the way around. And if you just divide both things into four and just stretch the top but not the bottom. In other words, you're stretching the band but you don't stretch the shirt. And then it just lays nice and flat. So it's not that hard. Um, I, we tell ourselves it's hard, but really isn't. <laughs> Do you believe me? <laughs> no, it really isn't. Um, I started 
Well, I started on woven, but I went, my mom taught me knits really early. We went to stretch and sew uh, back in the 70s together. And so knits don't, I, I'd rather sew a knit than anything else just because, not because I think they're easier or because I don't like what, sewing wovens. I just like wearing knits. I mean, I just, they're so comfortable and um, there's so many choices. So, um, but I do like my woven patterns too. Uh, knit hand holding. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We're going to go through this knit series. I, I did the first one the other day. Um, I've been going through, I'm picking some, my hold up here is I've been trying to pick the right patterns in fabric. I want to show you, with each pattern that I show, I want to show you a right one and a wrong one so that you can get an idea of what kinds of knits go with what kinds of patterns. I'm trying to get a really good cross section of things. And then I'm also going to show you some tips for cutting and handling them, you know, be even before you start to sew. And then the next one will be sewing tips. So, um, and then I'm going to do, I did a neckband one way back when, uh, with Friday Sewing School, but I'll, I'm going to do it again. And, um, you know, just, and I'm going to show you some serger basics and I'm going to try and cover knits. And of course your questions along the way may spur on more, um, more video topics because, you know, I try to just, if you guys are asking me questions, you know, that's where I want to take it. You know, I want to answer the questions. So the, you know, the more questions you ask, um, I will, you know, try and get them all answered in a video some way, shape, or form. <laughs> and fitting is, yeah, fitting is my real, you know, thing for this year. I, I've said that right from the beginning of the year. We did the pants, and now we're going to do the bodice. But I had so many people asking me about knits that I decided to do, like, a little mini-series on knits first before we go into that. Um... Yeah, you, fold over elastic takes some practice. Um, especially, I do mine on a cover stitch, and I didn't. You, I don't. I do have a binding thing now, but I didn't then, and I actually haven't figured out how to use the binder. I may have just not use it. I don't know, but um, it does take practice to um, get that lined up. But if you just go slow, you just gotta go really slow. You know. Um, and stretch the elastic but not the layer that you're attaching it to which is you know it just takes practice like you said I need to plug this in there we go all right do you have to change stitch length on various sections of the same garment on knits um no, not really. I I have, when I sew knits on the sewing machine, okay, so if you are going up and down, um, like on a lengthwise seam, okay, now this is four-way stretch, so that's, this, this isn't going to apply to this because you have to use stretchy a stretch stitch, but if it's just a two-way stretch, you can take and just use a regular straight stitch if it doesn't stretch in that direction because the seam doesn't have to stretch if the fabric doesn't stretch. But if anything that goes around you and across the, you know, the stretch of the fabric, that has to be a stretch uh, stitch. So I use my serger mostly, but occasionally um, because of a construction detail or something, I want to use my sewing machine. So what I use, um, I set up a favorite stitch and it's just a really, really narrow zigzag, like really narrow, like uh, down to like 0.5. Um, and then that almost looks on the outside like a regular stitch, but it does stretch. So um, the, the lightning stitch is just too obvious to me. It's too zigzaggy. Um, so I, that's what I do. And I just saved it as a favorite stitch and that's what I use when I need to like top stitch something um, in a knit that I don't want to do on the cover stitch or serger for some reason. Thank you Kathy Ann, I really appreciate that. I hope that I can help you uh, f further down the road. 
Um, hi, Paula. Let's see. You know, I think we, you, you're talking about things, feeling like things are big all the time. I think what happens is that we're so afraid we're going to make something too tight because that's a horrible feeling. But you have, you just, after you, you do it, um, you start to trust yourself after a while. Um, I made tents for a while until I realized that that's not really what looks good, <laughs> you know? So, um, kind of like that Cali shirt, you know, I really could have sized down on that thing. It just, it's not attractive. I will wear it, but I won't, I won't be on a video in it ever again. <laughs> it's really not my favorite thing. Um, it's comfortable. It's a nice woven um, tunic. And I think in like life it probably looks fine. But on that video, it just was like, oh no, I'm not wearing that again. Um, when you're doing top stitching for denim with the top stitching thread, do you have to make the length of the stitching longer? I always do a, like a three for top stitching so uh, or over. Um, I don't want it to be too much because it is a little bit functional. You know, the top stitching is um, usually holding the hem and, um, you know, the flat filled seams or whatever. So I do want it to be uh, enough that it doesn't come out. So I usually use like a three for top stitching. Any tips on sewing curves with a serger? Um, I think you just have to practice, like you said. Um, just, uh, you can pull them straight a little bit when you're going around, um, but you don't want to stretch the knit too much. So you just have to be really careful. And I think it's practice. Um, a lot of it is speed, slow down um, when you're good on a curve because just like driving, you have to slow down to take a curve. You have to slow down your sewing to take a curve too. Um, yeah, I just think it's practice. And some searchers are a little better with that than others too. I, I got this new one and I didn't realize how good it could be, I guess. Um, that's true with actually both of these machines. <laughs> I didn't know that I could have a machine that did all these things. I, I'm in heaven with this thing. And I am going to do a video still, but I've been just, I want to absorb really everything it can do, uh, both machines before I make a video because I don't want to misrepresent it. And I've also found a few things that, you know, I didn't like. So I want to make sure that I give it a well-rounded thing. Hi, Ingrid. I hope you're feeling well. By God's grace, she's doing well. Started walking without crutches. That's awesome. Oh, thank you for popping in to show us that you're doing well. I'm so happy. If you haven't been with us, Ingrid's been a regular on the chat and in the Facebook group, and she just had a hip replacement. So we're really happy that she's doing well. Um, to answer your question, Katie, knits are, I think they're a little bit easier to sew on the serger. The reason that we use a serger for knits, though, is because by nature, the serger stitch stretches. So it's not an issue with it's much better for knits. Um, as for easy, I don't know if it's easier or not, but it's just, it makes a, a cleaner garment and one that will, like, when you don't hear pop, 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 pop when you put it on. Um, because if you use a straight stitch, you know, it'll do that. Um, so but you can sew knits without a serger. You just have to use the narrow zigzag and, you know, do, uh, you know, not use just a straight stitch. Um, but uh, the serger just is an added sort of protection for the stretch. And I hope that makes sense. Uh, hi, Anessa. You want to sew so bad, but the only sewing I get to do is masks for a bit more. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I'm just so glad we can be done with those things. Ugh. Yeah. Katie, uh, I'm trying to sew a knit shirt now. I have stopped three times to pull the fabric out of the feed dogs, and I'm using the walking foot. Probably try okay. A couple things. Lengthen your stitch just a little bit. Um, 
I don't know what stitch you're using, but like I said, I use about a 0.5 and about at about 2.8 or even 3 um, because you don't want it to be, you know, the more that, especially with the walking foot, because it's going to feed from the top, which means it's going to stretch it every time. So maybe, I mean, the walking foot is good, but you just have to keep that in mind. You want maybe a little bit longer stitch. And also, if you have one of these guys, you can get it started with that. And then once you get it started, um, you can, another thing you can do is if it's eating it, or if it's pulling, you can um, lighten up on your um, presser foot pressure. If you can adjust it, that'll help too. So just a few tips. Um, you can't use the straight stitch plate because you need a zigzag for knits, so, um, which is what you do you know that in a woven so I have not I was kind of waiting for people to get here would you like me to let you know who won the prize I don't think she's in here I haven't seen her name but it was drumroll Louisa Stevens was the winner of the pattern giveaway so if you know her um, let her know I uh, look wait what was it hang on maybe it one second. I think I said her name wrong. Louise, not Louisa. Louise Stevens. So um, let me know if you know her, and I'm going to post that, of course. And um, if you, uh, Lu Louise, if you're watching, please send me your email so that I can give that to Love Notions because they will email you your pattern credit that you can pick a, a pattern. So um, go ahead and um, email me at uh, Dorothy's Daughter 1957 at gmail.com. All right. Hi, Pamela. Nice to see you. Hi, Vicki. Oh, this is a, a, a multiple device uh, charger, and I left my, my um, holder for my iPad downstairs, so I just grab that to use it. It's just like you can have a bunch of devices lined up and charge them all. So I just keep it on my sewing table because most of the time during the day this is where I am so I charge my stuff in here and that way um, you know they, they stay on the charger and be, or I can do whatever then later. The, show us the video. <laughs> which video, Anne? <laughs> I don't know which video you mean. Let me know what which one. <laughs> oh, Lenora, you know what? I I I sewed knits as a brand new sewer, so. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, my 10-year-old granddaughter just made a uh, little LDT, which is the laundry day tea for kids. So don't be afraid. You can do it. Uh, let's see. I got lost here. Since you've made the Blackwood cardigan, I was wondering fabrics you would recommend making that out of. Um, I would do a thinner knit, um, a more drapey knit, like a um, cotton jersey blend, um, double brush poly. I've made them in that. That works really well. Um, a sweater knit works really well. Um, anything that has a little bit of drape. So um, I've made them out of French terry. They're, that works well, too. The one that I made it out of was a little bit stiffer, though. So, But I still, you know, I still like it. Um, but it just has a different look than if it's a drapier thing. Um, but I think that, you know, sort of the drapier, thinner knits work a little better for that, for cardigans, because then they kind of flow. Sometimes tissue paper, yeah, for hungry machines, absolutely. You are so right. I'm... And I want to know what video I'm supposed to show. <laughs> I'm, I'm clueless. The glamorous one you've been talking. Oh, you mean the Cali shirt? Oh, it's my church video this week. 
I am the worship leader at our church, so <laughs> that's that's the one. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. It was not good. Um, I, it looked like a tent. It, it was bad. I, I was trying to focus on worship this morning, but I was just like, oh. <laughs> Ooh, a beautiful crepe floral would work really nice. Um, that'll drape beautifully. Yay, Louise. Yeah, do you know her, Vicki? You have her email by any chance? Maybe model it. What not to wear. Kim's version. Maybe I will. I'll uh, Maybe I'll take a screen grab from it and show it to you guys <laughs> when we're talking fabric choices that would be good because uh, that was not it was kind of a quilting cotton so it didn't have any drape whatsoever and it just it looked like a tent it reminded me I was on the fold line Facebook group the other day and this lady posted that um, I'm gonna tell you what not to do she made a tent a trapeze dress you know like a swing dress in brown linen and she goes what I have now is a poop emoji costume and I was dying it was so funny <laughs> wasn't quite that bad but just you know wasn't good <laughs> anyway all right so let me know which which idea you think uh, this is a uh, I got this from it's like a baby knit this is for my five-year-old grandson, and um, he kind of wants, my daughter-in-law kind of told me he needs jammies, so I was going to do a game day uh, shirt, and then just some, you know, pajama pants, and um, I was going to make the part underneath the V, you know, where the game day cuts off, it, it like, it has a horizontal thing here. I was either going to just insert a white panel or just make the whole front white and, um, you know, then put some, um, a vinyl design of some kind with sports like game on or something. Cause I mean, he loves, loves sports. So that was one idea I had. And then the other idea was to make him a, um, a Henley. Um, he loves the movie cars. I didn't have any cars fabric, but I do have this which is a knit with cars on it. So I could make him a little Henley shirt with this. And I thought that would be really cute with blue jeans and stuff too. So which one should I do? Or should I make a Henley with this and the jammies with this? Um, or if you know another pattern, um, it's hard for boys because you want to get creative and yet it's really difficult. The other one's easy. My other grandson, he just likes Pikachu and everything. <laughs> uh, free patterns for boys. I don't know of many free patterns for boys, but um, just like on Ellie and Mac, they, they always have patterns that apply to boys usually. Um, on their Wacky Wednesday, which are only a dollar, so that's about as close to free that's not free as you can get, I guess. Maybe I will do both. I'll see. Um, he would be thrilled, and that would make up for me taking something to his sister the other day. <laughs> cars. Yeah, he loves cars. Yeah. Sports, Henley, and Cars, PJs. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. White fabric and boys, oh, he, yeah, true. But if there's PJs, you know, um, yeah, you're right. Maybe the cars would be better. I don't know. <laughs> Game on PJs, no sports to watch. Yeah, that's what the idea that I had because my son is a sports fanatic. And he has sort of done, you know, uh, become a one with his daddy because he'll say he, he just I'll be so sad when he says it right but he always wants to watch oof ball <laughs> and they're Kansas City Chiefs fans and last year you know they won the Super Bowl and my son uh, and and his wife were on a uh, getaway they over Super Bowl Sunday and so we had the kids and we watched the Super Bowl with him and oh my gosh he was so excited he was just jumping all over the place 
<laughs> and and um, so he is thoroughly, for a five-year-old, very, very big sports fan. So he, you know, and there's none to watch right now. So, I mean, you know, I think my son puts on, like, old games for him because he doesn't know the difference. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this, what's lying here is a, another cartwheel collection for my granddaughter. This is the top and the little skirt. Actually, this is a skirt. It has shorts underneath. So, yeah, I can't wait to give this to her. She's three. This is his, this is his little sister. Ooh, the little vest pattern. Yeah, I've got that, actually. Um, I haven't made it yet, but I do have that one. Oh, and that one's free. That You're right. That's a free voice pattern. Yeah. All right. PJ, PJ Games. Yeah. Go. Oh, you're a Chiefs fan, too. Oh, my goodness. All he talked about for weeks after the Super Bowl was how he wanted to be Patrick Mahomes. And he'd say, Pat Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> it's such a cute way of saying it. And I'm like, well, you know what? They're... they're you probably couldn't pick a better idol because I think he's a pretty good guy. So, um, where do you like to buy children's fabrics? You know, I um, got these at the warehouse and things. Um, they had on their website that, or on their um, Facebook, they said that they'd gotten in baby knits. And I always am looking for baby knits to have for... Um, gifts, you know, because it just comes up sometimes. Um, but, you know, when I saw these boy ones, I, I bought quite a bit of them because I knew I'd want to make them for my own grandsons. Um, and um, I think Fabric Fairy, some of the um, more, uh, like, really individual boutiques kind of shops on Etsy and stuff, there they have a lot of knit prints for kids. Um, Fabric Fairy has a lot. Um, Girl Charlie really doesn't have a lot for kids, uh, sadly. Um, but um, Purple Seamstress has some. Um, um, Olga's Closet has some. Um, there's quite a few um, that have a lot. Baby, well, it's just a jersey um, that's like... it's. Uh, it's not 100% cotton, but um, it's just super soft and sort of, it's it's ribbed, like sort of more heavily ribbed. Um, just, you know, what you would, I call it baby knit because it's what you would, uh, what a onesie's made out of, basically. Which, I think those are 100% cotton, but I'm pretty sure the, this is not. No, they're not fire, fire retardant. Um, that is, you know, I don't know of any fabric that you can buy that is fire retardant. Um, so, yeah, you do take that risk. You are correct. But, um, you know, they have, you know, they have a lot of um, safety measures, you know, in their house. So it isn't, uh, there's a, you know, smoke alarms and all that too, so. That's a good idea. Put cars on the back pockets. That would be really cute. Or those little um, be, be Active shorts from Ellie and Mac. They're, they're knit shorts, but they have um, like a triangular cutout on the sides for a, like a contrast fabric. That would be cute too. All right. So this week um, coming up um, after uh, after I finish this for him, I have a cashmere, my very first cashmere pattern that I've ever sewn. I, sadly, I don't know why, because I'm a curvy girl and I probably should have been drawn to those right off the bat. But I'm making a Webster because I'm, I'm I'm gonna do that cami round roundup. So I'm trying to sew all these different camis. So that's the one I'm working on right now. And um, I'm kind of excited about um, sewing that one. 
and what else have I got on my plate? I'm going to be doing the and and reviewing the um, Ellie and Mac um, gathered tankini that they just came out with. Um, need to make myself a couple of swim tops, and um, yeah. So, what's on your plate this week? Yes, little girls' dresses are the best, aren't they? They're so fun. Brenda says she makes um, lots of little girls' dresses. Kathy Ann, with quarantining, it's hard to choose knits online. I can't, I know, it's true. Haven't been inside another building since March other than my home and my daughter's home. Um, yeah, I did go to, um, I have been to the fabric maybe a handful of times. I've been to, to Joann's maybe twice, and I went to Zinc's. Um, the fabric outlet. We were the only people in there when we were there, so it was very safe. Um, but, yeah, it is an issue. Um, and it's becoming, you know, even more. I mean, I haven't even gotten my hair cut since March, and I usually go, like, every six weeks. I mean, if you saw what my hair was like before I used product on it, I literally have this much gray. Um, my friend who's a hairstylist who lives up in Michigan actually found me some root spray <laughs> that works uh, really well because it covers it up pretty well, but it's bad and I really need to go, but I just don't really want to chance it yet. So, um, yeah. Anybody else have COVID hair? Um, see, I'm curvy girl too. I'm new at sewing. I wear 16 to 18 woven fabric. What size do I need for knits? Well, it depends on the pattern and basically you should go by your measurements. So every pattern will have the, um, measurements for each size. So what you want to do, and if you're new, new at sewing, um, you know, we can, we can help you with that. If you want to even get on the Facebook group and, you know, we can help you right along the way. But um, they'll have the, the uh, measurements and you want to measure yourself. And then you want to compare that to that chart. And what you, depending on what you're sewing, like if you're sewing um, a laundry day tee, which is like a swing top, you really just need to go by the bust because the bottom is not fitted. So, um, you know, just different things like that. So, um, depending on what you're sewing. So that's kind of not a question you can just really generally answer. Um, so I would, I would just um, compare your measurements to the pattern and then you can then make a determination which size would be best for you. And then if you fall outside the size range, like for example, if your hips are bigger, you can actually grade out. Um, you can actually gradually go out to that other size and so that it could be perfect size for you. So, um, and you know, we can help you do that. So I do have a video showing that um, back in Friday Sewing School. If you are brand new at sewing, I'd really suggest going back maybe and going through a few of those videos because I did um, show how to compare your body measurements to the, um, to the pattern and then, you know, grade in or out as needed, so, uh, which I always have to do, so. Let's see, where am I? Libby. Hi, Libby. Fabric store, you're not allowed to touch the fabric. <gasps> really? Oh my goodness, I haven't, I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't. Kathy got her hair cut. <laughs> I, I need to go. I don't know why I'm just afraid to, I guess. I don't know about somebody else being that close to me, my face. Oh, Rhapsody Blouse. Good, Kim. Enjoy that. Brenda's working on a dress muslin. Cool. Lisa's working on a chambray top. <laughs> oh, big, uh, cotton woven. Ooh, there's, you know, there's a lot of pretty ones. Look in Seamwork because, um, or the Colette, there's a, like a, what's the name of that pattern? Aster or something like that. 
Uh, it's really pretty. Let the gray grow out. I, you know, I was gonna, and I asked my husband, and he said no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess I won't be doing that for a while. <laughs> he said, no, don't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You know, Kate, I, yeah, I, me too. I have cut my bangs badly, <laughs> but I have cut them. But yeah, I thought about just dyeing my own too, but um, I'm afraid I would me mess up and pick a really bad color. So, and they use a bunch of different colors in my hair, so I don't want to mess it up. But honestly, she got this L'Oreal root, root Spray for me, and it came in two cans. It was really cheap, like 20 bucks. And I've used, I'm on the second can now, but I've been using it since probably April and um, yeah it covers it up really does but it's getting to the point where it's harder to cover it up so I need to do something uh, Aunt, uh, Becky, you just bought the laundry tee. How do you send it to Staples to get it printed? I don't know. I never send mine out. Um, there's a lot of places you can get them printed. Um, I think Staples website would probably tell you. Um, I know they always have the copy shop file, so that's what you'll need to send them. But um, you know, I just always print and tape at home. So um, I've never actually sent a, a file out to be printed. So. Um, if anybody wants to chime in and help her out with staples, that, that please feel free to do that. Yes, Vicki, you're right. The problem with needing the fire retardant is, is the nylon would just melt. You're right. Um, Kay, the Ellie and Mac Tankini, you would probably want to get a swim fabric. So probably um, nylon spandex. Um, Serge has a beautiful selection of swim fabrics. Let me show you this. I just got this from Serge and it's uh, for the tankini. Isn't that beautiful? Love that. And this, I already made myself one like this out of this fabric. I made a um, a swim top but my granddaughter told me that she wanted one like it <laughs> so I ordered another yard of it so that I can make her a, uh, a suit out of it so this is actually from the uh, Zinks warehouse at swim as well but um, solid color so Oh, cool. And that said, there's, said there's a new video up on Stephanie Rublet's YouTube with an amazing spreadsheet for making jeans. Oh, cool. I saw the beginning of that video, but I didn't, I wasn't busy and I didn't finish watching it. I didn't pay attention as much as I should. Um, she's very good. I really like Stephanie a lot. She's a really nice person too. Hubby says to tell you that we both had COVID hair until we started cutting each other's hair. Now we're presentable again. <laughs> good <laughs> I that's <laughs> yeah I, I don't think I trust my husband to cut my hair <laughs> he's probably he's an engineer he'd have to think it over too long before doing it <laughs> is anybody else married to an engineer that plans and plans and plans and plans I am I love him dearly though he's an absolutely fabulous man Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Just, she said it was exciting to, to see on the uh, all the ambassadors. Yeah, it is so fun. I really, you know, when she came up with that video idea, with she said, everybody take a little clip of, of somebody throwing fabric at you, you know, wear, wear a ready to wear, and then and it just sounded like not sure what she wants us to do. And then 
it just like it turned out so well I could not believe what she did with it it was great um, yeah I, I I've shown everybody that that I can I was really proud to be part of that <laughs> Cool. Cut and colored my hair for several years now. The main difference between a good haircut and a bad one is two weeks. Wow. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. My, in this case, probably more like two months. Lisa, they quoted me $50 over the phone. Oh, boy, that is expensive. Some patterns call for putting bias binding on a hem instead of doing it the regular way. Um, probably to keep, give it body. Um, that would be the only reason I could think of um, to bias bind a hem. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to, you know, save fabric is one, one way. I mean, I've, I've done that when I didn't have enough fabric, you know, because I, you know, was, had just enough, you know, to not and not be able to hem it. But, um, I think there's an, a lot of old, that's an old school thing to do quite a bit. Um, my mom used to use the wide bias tape on hems, my little dresses when I was little. Um, but um, I think probably the biggest reason would be to give it body. Am I right? Anybody else have any ideas of why you, they would do that? All the plans. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the, I, yeah, he just, he plans and plans and plans, like, and then, like, little, like, and I'm just like, let's just do it, you know, and he's like, no, we gotta plan it. <laughs> so we actually balance each other out really well, because I would have forged ahead on things that would, wouldn't have been good, and I could kind of spur him on to get stuff done. Uh, Kim says, for the Luna lounge wear, every time the markings for the buttonholes don't come out in the center of a fake fly, but in the picture, they're centered. Everyone else have that issue. Um, you know what? I, I skipped the buttonholes on mine and just put elastic. So I, I, um, I didn't do the buttonholes, but I didn't, I've had done other patterns that have those buttonholes and I haven't had an issue. So. Um, but maybe that pattern is that way. Um, best place to ask that would probably be on the Love Notion Support Facebook group because um, there's a lot of people who've probably um, done those there. Um, I know that I've never heard of anybody having that issue, but that doesn't mean squat because I haven't made them myself. I mean, I've made the Lunas, but I, I just I was really in a hurry. I've only made them once, and I was really in a hurry, and I just put the tighter elastic in and went with it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, you know what? Pin, uh, she bought some, some paper, so that's really awesome, and she's printing the pattern instead of herself. And, you know, honestly, when you get used to putting them together, they really go together pretty quick. And I literally, I'll take like four or five patterns and I'll go and um, put up a little table in the living room and I'll turn on a movie or I'll do it in here because I've got a TV up there in the corner and I'll just watch a movie and tape away. And then you'll be surprised how quick it goes. You know, I'll, you know, watch a movie and I'm done taping four or five patterns. So it's pretty good, pretty easy. Okay, how much is reasonable? What how, what does PDF plotting charge? I'm curious. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> I I know what you mean because you know what, fabric is so precious. Like you want to use it on the right thing. I know. That's what I'm going back and forth. Like, if I didn't use this for that, what could it be? <laughs> You know, I keep going back and forth. If I use this, will I be able to get some more for, you know, the baby boy that I know is going to be born? You know, that kind of thing. But it's just, yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, the names of fabrics can be confusing.
but you know one of the best things to do like that those vogue back issue um fabric swatch books are free i mean i think you have to pay shipping but um you can get them for free so you know just uh think about doing that and then you'll be able to feel the fabrics and see the content it'll make you a lot more confident in buying online and once you get with one or two stores and you know if you you know what their description was for what you bought um, some other time so it has the same description then you kind of know that that's what it's going to be um, so there's certain stores I trust more than others um, the first time I order from some from a store I'll usually just do like one or two pieces of fabric and not you know do a whole bunch until I kind of see how it goes unless the prices are just crazy awesome then I just go wild <laughs> Yeah, me too, Paula. Um, putting PDFs, she says, putting PDFs together is like therapy. It is. It is it's kind of fun. Kind of put, doing a puzzle. Wow. $1.29 a page. But then you have to pay shipping, correct? Uh, Edna, do you have to pay shipping at PDF plotting? And, like, is it expensive? That's that's the, the thing that got me was, like, is it when I looked, I thought it was like seven dollars, and I mean, while that's pretty reasonable for any shipping right now because it's pretty, you know, but that's another seven dollars that I add to the twelve dollars I already paid for the pattern or ten or whatever. So that's yeah, it gets it makes them kind of pricey. Um, yeah. Oh, Ingrid, have a good rest, and I'm so glad you're doing well. Thank you for popping in. We really appreciate you showing us that you're doing well. $10 per pattern. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know. That's a lot, you guys. To me, that, you know. Yeah. I paint at home. Doesn't use a uh, print at home. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it that doesn't use much ink because every page only has a couple lines on it. And then, you know how you always have extra prints for different, maybe not even sewing, but, you know, like I always, you know, being a musician, I always have, you know, music that we've copied and, you know, made one more copy than what we need or whatever. And the back is blank. I just put those in upside down and use them for patterns because why not? So, like, a lot of my patterns have music on the back of them. <laughs> but, um, and I even, like, you know how if you're making, like, I, I was making this in a 3T. And, you know, like, the girl size 12 spilled over into another page. But I actually really didn't need that page, you know. But I went by the directions and I, it said you needed it. So, I really didn't need it. So, those go right back into my printer, <laughs> you know, to be printed on the other side for something else. So, um, I, I'll save money any way that I can. Um, and my daughter, who homeschools four children and prints every one of their textbooks, bought the Epson Eco Tank, and um, she was telling me she printed 3,000 pages, and it's not even down halfway. So um, I bought one just like a couple weeks ago. And, yeah, I probably, it says I've printed over 500 pages, and the ink isn't even down at all. Like, it's just, yeah, really good. Trying to catch up here. That's a good idea to get paper at Goodwill. I agree with you, Kathy. $10 is more fabric. You're right. Yeah, you've got the Epson EcoTank too, Lisa. Don't you love it? So far, I really, li I really like it a lot. Uh, never used PDF before. Oh, 
Love Notions haul will become interesting when I find a printer I can print them on. I figure it will be in the wrong scale at first for sure. Um, just make sure that you tell it you want it to print um, at 100% so that it's not shrunk to fit or if anything says fit to page or shrunk, shrink to fit or anything like that, uncheck it and you should be fine. Um, I print right from my iPad. Now when you print to an I from an iPad though, you have to have all the lines. You can't do layers. But I actually like that because when I want to gray between sizes, I can kind of see, you know, I like to see all the sizes. I don't know. It's just me. Um, that's where I got mine. Was it Costco, Alberta? Um, I don't know. But it'd be worth, I got it from their website. So I would just look on their website. It was on sale for uh, two seventy nine, I think, when I got it. So... You know, testing patterns, I end up printing a lot, and that's why I got the Echo Tank because I could never send those out to be printed. I'd, I'd be a fortune um, because when you're a pattern tester, you, you know, there's two or three, sometimes four versions of it, and you've got to print them each time something changes. Sometimes you don't have to print the entire thing, but um, it's a lot of it's a lot of printing, and um, I was just going through ink cartridges like crazy because I test for Ellie and Mac and I test for Love Notions um, and you know it's just it's a lot of printing so um, that's why I did that Wow Wow that's that's Ramona that's I had the instant ink as well we still have it on the one downstairs it works out for music and things like that um, if you're having a lot of ink on a page that's when that pays off but patterns don't have that much ink per page so it's like a wasting one of those pages you know for instant ink I think oh have a nice brunch Dory I've had fun today. Mary Ellen's got to go. We got to start putting things up for the trip. Oh, that's right. You're down there. Please be safe. Um, definitely hunker down and stay safe. Not the fastest, but great for. Yeah, I agree. Lisa says that the ink of the Epson isn't the fastest printer, but it's very good, and it, it really is good. I like it. Good night, Paula. Good to see you. When it, Oh, printers are hard to find right now. Haven't the weirdest things been hard to find? You know, we like this. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at me, but we like this Brooks Chili Mix. You know, it's just a can, and we like it to mix with I've been used to like tomato juice and some other things and I just like those spices and I add my own to it and that's what how I make my chili it's got a lot of other stuff in it too but just that's like a base that I use and we haven't been able to find that at the store since since COVID and you know it's just weird why is that always gone I don't know why that's like would that be a hot item I don't understand <laughs> especially in the summer <laughs> We have a storm coming. Florida is low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you'll keep your power through the whole thing. I've been in one hurricane, and we were five days without power, so I hope that doesn't happen to you. But this is back in the 1980s, in 1983, Hurricane Alicia. We lived in Houston, and it was interesting. <laughs> we should have named my daughter Alicia, because she was born nine months later. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's not good that's a really expensive one look on Amazon they had them too actually if you go to my um, Amazon influencer store I think I put it on there um, it's probably in the, the category for the sewing room I have a little list that says for the sewing room I'm pretty sure it's in there 
either that or there's patterns and printing or something. I, I think that it's in one of those two places. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Cow manure for the garden. That's, well, I guess everybody's gardening because they're afraid they won't be able to get food. I don't know. Weird. Went through Hugo. That's terrible. That that one was worse than what I went through. Yeah, my niece was in her uh, in Puerto Rico during the last one. She she teaches Montessori. I don't remember the town, but she's in Puerto Rico, and she we didn't hear from her for days and days, and we were really sick with worry but she's okay she was fine she was holed up at someone's house but they had no um, no communication connection at all they had there was no internet there was no phone and she couldn't let her you know she couldn't let her mom know she was okay but um, but she was <laughs> and she went right back to Puerto Rico because she loves it there thank you Dan Well, I hope you enjoy your, your pattern. I'm sure you will. Be sure and get on our Facebook group and, and post pictures and um, lots, lots of good help going on there. And it's honestly everybody helping each other. And I try to get on there twice a day, and but honestly, it's getting really big, and I, don't, I can't read every single one anymore. So um, I'm trying, but it's a lot now. So, um, But you guys are doing so good at helping each other. Um, and you know be sure and if you need me for something and I if you need me to notice something just you know tag my name in there so that I'll see it like you know mention me in a comment or something so I can go look at it and you know with the way the internet is I also like to ask you guys for help it has not happened in our group but if there's anything appropriate inappropriate whatsoever in our Facebook group please draw my attention to it because, you know, I don't want, that's, that's not, not allowed. And um, I just uh, want to keep it a safe space for everybody. So if you see anything, you know, that you think is inappropriate, please let me know. It hasn't happened, and I don't think it will, but, you know, the Internet is the Internet. So um, there's only a few people that I have, you know, not let in, you know, when you answer the questions. And those people have only been people who didn't answer the questions at all, and I... I would email them back and ask them to um, answer them so I can let them in, um, but never heard back. So hopefully that keeps out some of the people who are just trolling to make trouble. But it can happen, so if you notice anything, please let me know. Bye, Nancy. Really, uh, really glad to have you here today. Very true, Pamela. I am not gardening, but um, I should be. <laughs> Just go to um, search for the Dorothy's Daughter Community. Um, that's the name of the group. And then you, there's a, when you find it, you just go and it says join group. And then it'll come up with a couple questions. Just that's so I can just verify that you're a human and that you sew, basically. And um, then I'll just approve you. You win. It's getting huge. We have about seven, 720 or 30 now, I think. A lot, a lot of people. But it's a lot of help then. Um, and I never dreamed it would get that big, just like I never dreamed this channel would grow this much either. But it's wonderful. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a blast. And um, I just feel like I have friends all over now. <laughs> Great. Nice to see you, Katie. Enjoy. Well, ladies, uh, it's after. It's 4.12. I didn't even realize it had been the hour already. <laughs> have a wonderful afternoon. I'm going to wrap it up. Anybody have any questions before I go? Uh, Ramona, that might be good. I, I, I have to look into how others have implemented moderators, but that is a great idea. 
um, if anybody's interested in being one, you know, send me a uh, direct message me because I, um, yeah, I might have to do that. Bye, Linda. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Brenda. Thank you so much. Well, we'll look forward to seeing there, you there, Kim. Bye, Teresa. Good to see you. Bye, Ann. Good to see you, too. Bye, Ramona. Thank you. Well, have a fantastic day, you guys. And um, I will see you in the videos and on the Facebook group. Take care. God bless.